grew up in a family of artists. Coming from Dallas, that's where I was raised, my father and mother both from New York and they wanted a better life for their children. Um, we were looked upon um, a little differently because artists are different, they're eccentric, you know, and my father being an inventor, he had his highs and lows, and my mother was a wonderful weaver and a creator also. And um, there were four of us, and um, we grew up, you know, watching my father go through, you know, such painful moments. He, there was a time my father burned all of his work because he was so depressed, um, because he couldn't support the family and do what he loved doing. And for a child, seeing them go through these emotional ups and downs, I mean, extremes, it can be very hard and difficult sometimes to digest. Um, but at the same time, it helps me to understand the mind of an artist. And I thought then, I will never become an artist because it's just so, it's too dramatic for me, it's too intense. But I'm like, but here I am, an artist, and I'm creating, and I couldn't, couldn't imagine doing anything else. Growing up throughout the years, I would see great pieces of works, and I would say to myself, it's, it's kind of sad in a way, because I would think, you know, it's going to be lost in time. And I just think, how can I bring them back, you know, in a way that people can see them in a new way? And I was always thinking this in my head, but I wanted to take what was inside here and put it out into the physical world. And that was, was difficult to figure out. When I was like 39, turning 40, I, I, something inside of me was screaming to come out. I thought, I want people to look and say, oh my God, I feel such intensity. Not, oh, that's a nice picture, I've, you know. No, no, I wanted, I wanted you to feel something. And to create, to pull out an emotion from people and to figure out what it is, it's, it's hard. It's very difficult. But when it all worked together, it was a relief. And it really wasn't so much a breakthrough as a, as a continuum this process of the breakthrough. Uh, Ingrid, in her 39, 40 years old, just, just a sense of something's trying to get out. And it was obviously her art, you see that now, but just unsettled, and I gotta get to this. And so the process was, as a husband and wife, was what do you want? You know, what do you need? And she wasn't sure. So we took a, this spare garage, this little one car garage part of our house and said, it's yours. Find yourself. Do you want a studio? What do you need? So she took this space and started experimenting out there and stayed up all night. And no, well, it's not. Looking back, it's amusing, but at the time, it's pretty unsettling. You know, three o'clock in the morning, where's my wife? You know, she's out there, you know, discovering her, her, her uh, reason for being, her, uh, her purpose. And I'm understanding now what my father went through. It's, you just don't give up. And, and you know what, yeah, go to the depths of hell, go into the abyss. Because I did, I, I went in there. Taking the ideas from, uh, from the idea to manifestation was difficult. Because there was the idea that there was, we're gonna do this transparent layer, I wanna show them. And she was talking it out, and we talked together about it. Uh, and uh, technology and computers have some part of this. Um, but it's, it's a small part, and so we went through this trying to do back and forth, and eventually it came to fruition, and um, it, was a, it was a long process, several, several years, literally, and a lot of things that didn't work. Art is about experimenting, and Ingrid constantly experimented. That's her great gift, just trying and trying. This didn't work. Throw it away. These incredibly expensive materials, tens of thousands of dollars worth of materials thrown in the trash. And I said, and this, what I gave to Ingrid as, you know, when we couldn't necessarily afford these things, said, what do I do with this beautiful print that we made, this, this $500 print? I said, tear it. Oh no, I, I can't, I'm destroying it. I said, tear it. You have to try these things, rip it in half, feel it. And she, and it became part of her work, just ripping these things up and collaging. It's, it's, it's very much alive in there when I'm working in there. Um, there's a lot of energy going on in there. And this is the part where I hate doing some of these prints, but, but I do it. You just, you just got to go for it. You just not worry about it. You don't think about it. You just do it. I love the patterns on this. These, conch, these shelves, 
It's just, it's just beautiful. Sometimes I do use musical notes, which I'll try to. Ode to Joy. So they take things like this. This was the beginning. But I printed up. You'll see how her eyes will come out like this. Yeah. I'm gonna put these pearls on here. But this, I love this musical note. This was from an old pen that got an antique store. I was thinking maybe here, you know, maybe like this. Who knows? When I get to the end, I put these pieces on. There are certain periods that aren't, I'm not drawn to, but the Baroque period, the Renaissance, the images of these people, I, I can't really explain why, but it speaks to me. And, I, and I, I've had people ask me to use certain images um, to do commissions. And if it doesn't do anything for me, I won't do it. I can't do something that doesn't talk to me. Um, I love that period, but that's when I went to the Louvre and I had saw some of these great tapestries. Some of these pieces, these paintings were just unbelievable. And I guess these tapestries and with all this going on, I thought if I could take images or take little details of these and, and use modern technology and bring them back and show them in a different way. And um, those are the ones that speak to me. I can't really answer why. I just love that period. I'm drawn to it. And I'm going to stay there in that period. The most important part of this, and Ingrid said it very well, is taking these paintings and ideas and these images and these people that lived so long ago and bringing them back to life. And she said, how can I do this? And we talked about it and doing it in a way that they floated and that they were uh, apparitions, that they were ghost-like, but alive, alive to us in this illusion of time. It, we took the past and the present and combined them into art. And of course the first one doesn't work. The, you know, when you see a, a, a beautiful painting, there's a thousand that didn't work to get to the beautiful painting. Da Vinci's first works were probably dreadful. Something had to happen. How did you get there? You weren't born painting. So she did all this and, and, and they're quite wonderful now. I was so exhilarated because I was like, ah, this is what was inside him, got it out there. I was like, oh my God, okay. Okay, now I've discovered what I want to do. And also I'm like, I'm driven to keep working. And I thought, I have my reason for being here. Renaissance uh, imagery turns a lot of people off. But if you can take this contemporary imagery and combine it with Renaissance ideas and, and images, you have something fresh. And Ingrid has accomplished this like no other artist I've seen. And I have seen a lot of art, a lot of art, hundreds of thousands of images, literally. I'm not bragging about it, it's just what an art dealer does been at museums and the artists that I've represented. And she has truly come up with something new. And that's not a small thing. That's an extraordinary thing in the art world. And there's hundreds of thousands of artists that have lived and do live. And uh, she's come up with something very exciting. And I thought to myself, I gotta shape up and, and straighten myself up and just do what I was meant to do. And it was my gift to give this back. So it was, like I said, it was an obligation. It was a responsibility for the world to see this. And that's what I'm doing. When I go to create, I have to go alone. And it's, it's very lonely life. Don't think it's all great. And then I have to go into my studio, and then I have to dig down deep into the depths of my soul. And I have to take it out and throw it onto the canvas for the world to see. And that's very hard. And I do that a lot, because my work, I wouldn't have any other way, but my work is very intense and very emotional. It has to be. And you know, I, mean, I get exhausted a lot because so much comes out of me. Um, sometimes I wish I thought I, just, I wish I had a nine to five job, a secretary, go to work, but I, I don't. I'm always experimenting and I'm always trying new things. It's, um, and, but then once you learn what, what's the right thing, okay, that's great, but let's move on to the next thing. Those true artists, they think outside the box. Um, from my first show, a, 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 a collector came and he said, you didn't go to art school, did you? And I said, no. He goes, because you've broken every rule that we teach. And I said, yeah, I did. Um, my, my, my materials that I use, and I experiment with new things. I'm always experimenting with very high toxin things. I have my mask now and stuff. But um, 
how are you going to know? How are you going to know what to? How are you going to know what, what's going to work, what's not going to work? Um, so that's 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 what I love too. I love this man, mad scientist inside me. I created a piece called um, um, "Distant Shores Calling Me Back," and um, this goddess, she was. I wanted to have her submerged in water, and I had to figure out what chemicals or what do I need to use to make her look like there's water flowing down. And then that's where I use, I, I you know, I start out with some sample ideas and I try and see how it works. Now let me try it on my work. Okay, I figured that one out. Then I'll go on to the next thing. Maybe I'll start doing something else. Like, oh. Oh, I'll put on oh, Beethoven's Fifth, what the hell, put that on. Also, I'm like, oh, okay, now I've got to go and I'll print up on archival paper, you know, there was a movement in there that just filled me, and I thought, what drove him to create such profound music? So I did a piece called Beethoven's Muse, you know, there must have been some woman that really struck a chord in him and brought him such great joy and such great sorrow. I layered my piece with musical sheets, which I love. I love the Fifth and the, um, the Ninth Symphony. I love Ode to Joy, and I put those into my work. There are certain patterns that I see in nature now, and in the sand or in the leaves, and, and I, I, I want to put those into my work. It started out with my husband bringing. Um, a butterfly that he found <laughs> outside. He said he brought it in for me, and I put it into the work. I thought, ah, that's it, because they are so fragile and so beautiful, and here so brief. Their lives are so brief. Some only live, live like a single day, and and I I feel that's how we are. We're, it's so brief our life. It goes by very quickly. I open the wings up, my daughter helps me and my children help me, they're involved with it. We have to put them in a humidifier and then we open them up and they have to dry and it's like opening up a present each time because it's such a gift just to see the beauty of what nature and God created. Sometimes just taking the art you already have that you love and uh, moving it to a different wall becomes a new painting. Uh, Ingrid's works that way, especially uh, when the light changes. Uh, if you're in a um, in a, a very bright room versus a dimly lit room, you'll start seeing things that are very, oh, disturbing, almost ghost-like in there. And then later in a bright room, you'll see the depth of it. You see the butterflies and the and layers that are three or four back where there's uh, uh, groups of men playing instruments. Well, I never saw that. What are they doing behind this woman's face? And it's all this story, the layering of this story that is the total story. And what's wonderful about art that's so complex, like Ingrid's work, is that you will not outgrow it. It'll be on the wall, and uh, in 10 years you'll look and say, I never saw that. There's a butterfly in there? People that own her work will say, I didn't know there was a butterfly in there, and there's seven of them. I've always loved the mountains. Um, it's just the energy from the, from it just feeds me. And I love when I moved to this place. There was no house or anything. I, I walked up and I thought, Oh my God, I could be here forever. I could set up a teepee and be here forever because it's not about the house. It's about what I'm surrounded by. Because now I go for my daily walks with my dog. Thank God for him. He pulls me out of my studio, which I need to get out of sometimes, otherwise I'd go nuts. <laughs> but it clears my head and it helps me to think about things and I go back into my studio all refreshed but it's nature it's 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 it, it feeds us in such a beautiful way and I'm like and I I think I mentioned this before it's just discovering rediscovering again in, in a more profound way and how the beauty of nature and how it interacts with humans it, it it plays such an important role for all of us we're all connected everything's connected and I'm putting the nature and the beauty of that into the work We've been married uh, for almost 15 years now, and it's, I'd say, the best ever in every way. Because when someone finds their purpose and expresses it, in, especially in art, they're fulfilled. It, it, their purpose is being, is being uh, manifest. It's an extraordinary thing, and I'm glad to be part of it. I thank God for my family. They are the anchor 
for me in this world um, because I would be out there up in the clouds. I would never leave my studio because once I'm in there, I am gone, I am lost. And um, now I know that, oh, my kids will be home soon. I gotta make a snack for them, I've gotta prepare dinner, I've gotta go do a little laundry. I'm like, thank God I have these interruptions. Thank God I have these distractions. They are a gift to have. I need that. I think we all do as humans. We need to have inter interaction with each other. It's part of being connected. I love to laugh and I have to have laughter in my life and they, we all just have the best time. And as soon as Monday comes along again, I'm like going, okay, I have to dedicate myself to my gift. <laughs> my first show was in 2007, using what I had discovered and everything sold out. And, and, I, and, I, and I thought, this is not fair. I, I know these collectors, but they're big collectors. But, and, and, and I was told that, well, these people aren't buying your paintings because they feel sorry for you. They're buying because they like them. And I couldn't believe, like, people really like my work, what I created. And I like it. So I get your work. I really get it. I understand it. Because they're very haunting. Um, they are. But, but they're, they're intended to strike an emotion. I want, I want somebody, when they look at the work, I want them to feel it, you know. The first time people see her work, they're always surprised, always excited. And it is fun to sit there like a fly on the wall and listen and pretend like you don't know who did them and what do you think of these. And it's so unusual, her work. And there, it is capture, it is, it is speaking to them in the way that they were waiting for. Oh, I love this imagery. I love the, the, the mystery of it. I keep, every time I walk by, I see more. When people come to see my show, these, the viewers, whatever, they look at it and they, they start crying. There's no words, but it's, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> that was the greatest compliment because I know I hit something, you know, deep inside them. When I'm done with it, I'm done with it. I want to let it go. I want to set it free. I've gotten through what I needed to get through at that time. It's like, it's like my diary. Okay, I'm done with it. I want you to feel a sense of mystery when you look at my work, because there's so few mystery left in the world. And this is the, the magic of it. I'll see her making the pieces, I'll see the entire process, and then when they're done, in the frame, how did you do that? And I'm looking at it, I don't know how she did it. And I saw it being done. She's starting to experiment with different materials. I go in there and it's a, you know, what are you doing with that thing? You know, she pulls something off the wall and suddenly it's in her art. You never know what's gonna happen with Ingrid's work because she's such an experimenter and that's what art is. And she's always experimenting, trying things. And they don't always work, of course. When they work, they're just extraordinary. I just have to hold my, my uh, judgment most of the time say, I don't know, that looks strange. And then when it's done, it's amazing. A part of my heart belongs to my paintings um, because they're very emotional and very intense. Um, it's sort of like I have like this, with relations with something bigger than what I am, something more profound. And I'm having so much fun with it now, and I have no regrets.